Today we are going to go over the diet for gestational diabetes, which is when your blood sugars are high when you're pregnant. During pregnancy, the placenta gives off hormones. While this is normal, these hormones can make it harder for some women to control their blood sugars. It's important that the mother's blood sugars are controlled during pregnancy. If the mother's blood sugars are too high too often, there can be negative effects on the baby, such as larger than normal birth weight and an increased risk for the baby to be overweight or obese and have diabetes later in life. Diet changes can have a positive effect on blood sugars. Let's go over the diet changes to help women with gestational diabetes control their blood sugars during pregnancy. There are two main parts to this diet. The first part is to eat small, frequent meals and snacks every two to three hours throughout the day. This helps to control blood sugar and keep it from going too high. The second part of this diet is to not eat too many foods high in carbohydrates at any one meal or snack. This diet is not low in carbohydrates, but it is moderate in carbs. This helps to keep blood sugars in a normal range most of the time. Let's go over the first part of the diet in a little more detail. Try to eat three small to medium sized meals and three healthy snacks a day. Try to eat breakfast within one hour of getting up. About two to three hours later, have a mid-morning snack. Two to three hours after that snack, have lunch. And then eat a second snack mid-afternoon, about three hours after lunch. Eat dinner a few hours after that afternoon snack. Do not wait too late to eat dinner. Have your last snack one hour or closer to bedtime. This snack should get you through the night without you waking up in the middle of the night feeling hungry. By spreading your meals and snacks out over the day and keeping them in small to medium portions, you can help get the nutrition you need for a healthy pregnancy while better controlling your blood sugar. Now let's go over the second part of the diet, which is to eat moderate amounts of foods that are high in carbohydrates at any one meal or snack. By limiting the amount of carbohydrates, or carbs as we'll call them, at your meals and snacks, your blood sugar will be more controlled. Food is made up of three main parts, carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. Some foods like fruit are mostly carbs, while others like meat are mostly protein and fat. Carbs are the part of food that will raise your blood sugar the most. Proteins and fats have less effect on your blood sugar, and they are generally not limited as much. Let's take a look at the food groups that are high in carbs. These are the foods you will need to include in your meals and snacks, but not too much at any one meal or snack. They are starches, which includes bread, cereal, grains, like rice and pasta, waffles, pancakes, crackers, and snack foods, as well as beans, some starchy vegetables like potatoes, corn, and peas. It's good to eat these foods, just not too much at any one time. Fruit is another carbohydrate group. All fruit, including fresh, frozen, and canned fruits, will almost be all carb. Therefore, it will raise your blood sugar. It's important to eat fruit since it contains many vitamins and healthy nutrients. Avoid fruit juices of any kind since they are concentrated in fruit sugar, but the whole pieces of fruit are quite healthy. The third category is milk. In this milk group is really just milk and yogurt. Milk and yogurt have calcium and protein in them, but also enough carbohydrate that they will raise your blood sugar. Milk and yogurt have many nutrients in them as well, and they're healthy foods. Just be sure to count them as part of your total carbohydrate intake. Try to pick lower sugar yogurts and plain unflavored milk. Also, please note that other foods made from milk like cheese and cottage cheese and butter are low in carbohydrate or have no carbohydrate and they are not counted towards your total carbohydrate amounts. Sweets, desserts, and other carbohydrates like cookies, cakes, ice cream, and other foods with added sugar like pancake syrup, jelly, and muffins are all very high in carbohydrates and usually very low in nutrients. So these should be eaten in small amounts since they can raise your blood sugar quickly and very high. In general, protein foods like meat, fish, eggs, cheese, cottage cheese, and peanut butter do not affect blood sugar very much and do not have to be limited. Fats are also not a focus to be limited and include foods like oils, 
butter, mayonnaise, unsweetened salad dressings, avocados, cream cheese, and sour cream. Finally, most vegetables are considered non-starchy, and although they have some carbohydrate in them, the amount is very low, so they won't have much of an effect on your blood sugar. Generally, these foods are not limited either. If you eat very large amounts at one time, you can raise your blood sugar, but this is not likely. These non-starchy vegetables include lettuce, spinach, and other dark leafy greens, onions, mushrooms, asparagus, carrots, broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, celery, radishes, and eggplants. Remember, there are a few starchy vegetables like potatoes, both white and sweet, peas, and corn that have more carbohydrate in them. They're healthy and you can absolutely eat them. Just be sure to count them as one of your carbohydrate servings. The amount of carb or number of carb servings you need at each meal or snack is based on your age, height, weight, and how many babies you are carrying. It's also dependent on how active you are. Typically, most women need about three to four carbohydrate servings per meal and one to two at each snack. Check with your registered dietitian nutritionist on how many servings of carbohydrate you need. Let's go over some example serving sizes of carbohydrates. In the starch group, each of the following is one carbohydrate serving each. One slice of bread, one small roll, quarter of a bagel, a six inch pancake or waffle about the size of a DVD, one third of a cup of cooked ready to eat rice or pasta, and half a cup of beans, peas, potatoes, or lentils are all one carbohydrate serving each. Snack foods like chips and crackers vary depending on their size. Cereal varies widely too, so you will want to check the food label for the amount of carb. We will review reading a food label in a minute. In the fruit group, half of a banana, one small apple or orange, a cup of cut up melon, three quarters a cup of blueberries, one and a quarter cups cut strawberries, half a cup of mango or two tablespoons dried fruit like raisins are all one serving each. In the milk and yogurt group, the following are one carbohydrate serving. Eight ounces of plain unflavored milk, no matter the amount of fat, and eight ounces of plain yogurt. If you drink a milk substitute like almond or coconut milk, or you eat a flavored yogurt, vanilla, strawberry flavored, you'll want to check the food label for the amount of carb. Sweets, desserts, and other carbohydrates. All of the following are one carbohydrate serving each. One tablespoon of brown or white sugar, a tablespoon of honey or maple syrup or chocolate syrup, and a tablespoon of jam or jelly are all one serving. Half a cup of ice cream is one carbohydrate serving, as well as a quarter of a muffin, and just two Oreo cookies are one carbohydrate serving each. Again, try to limit these foods since the carbs in them will add up quickly. Combination foods. These can vary a lot in the amount of carbohydrate too. One medium slice of pizza is generally about two carbohydrate servings, or 30 grams of carb. A cup of casserole, that's mixture of meat, starch, and vegetables, is usually also around two carbohydrate servings, or 30 grams. And one cup of broth-based soup is usually around one carbohydrate serving, but it may be more than that if it has a lot of pasta, rice, or beans in it. For foods like this that you are unsure of, try to check the nutrition label. Let's review reading a food label that gives you the exact carbohydrate information on it. First of all, let's do a little basic math. One serving of carbohydrate food is the same as 15 grams of carbohydrate. In other words, one serving of a carb food has 15 grams of carbohydrate. They're equal. So one serving of carb is 15 grams. If you're eating two servings of carbohydrates, that's 15 and 15, 30 grams of carbohydrate. Let's take a look at a couple of examples we just reviewed. A slice of bread is one carbohydrate serving, so that's 15 grams of carb. Half a cup of beans is also one carbohydrate serving, or 15 grams of carb. And the same for one third of cooked ready to eat pasta or rice. Each one of those is one carb serving each, so it would be 15 grams. With the rice and pasta example, a third cup of cooked rice is 15 grams, so one cup is a third plus a third plus a third, 
or three total carbohydrate servings, which is 15 times three or 45 grams total. You can see where the carbohydrates add up quickly. Remember, you may not be eating large amounts of carb at any one meal or snack, but you will be eating frequently throughout the day. So you can still get in all the carbs that you need from your three meals and your three healthy snacks. Now let's take a look at an actual food label. This is a can of soup. The two main things you wanna look at are the serving size and the total carbohydrates. In this example, one cup is the serving, and down below, you see total carbohydrates is 25 grams. The 25 grams is almost, but not quite, two servings of carbohydrates. Also take a look at the number of servings per container. In this case, there are two servings, which mean there are two cups, and if you eat the entire can of soup, like most people probably do, you're eating two servings or two cups, which is 25 plus 25 grams for a total of 50 grams. 50 carbohydrate grams in that two cup serving. Whenever you have a food label, it's a good idea to look at the information on it since it is the most exact measure of how much carb is in a food or beverage. One other thing is please pull your measuring cups out of the drawer or cupboard and use them to measure foods, especially foods like rice, pasta, potatoes, and cereals. If you don't have measuring cups, buy some. They can be found at almost any grocery store or where food is sold and even the dollar stores. Lastly, let's quickly review a few miscellaneous items. Many food items such as spices, herbs, lemon and lime juice, hot pepper sauce, plain mustard, vinegar, these are considered free foods that are very low in carbohydrate or they're carbohydrate free, so you don't have to count the carbs in them. Artificial sweeteners such as Equal, Splenda, and Stevia are considered safe by the FDA, but this is based on weak evidence. We recommend that you avoid these or use these in small amounts during your pregnancy. If you eat processed meats like lunch meat or hot dogs, bologna or sausage, be sure to heat these foods up until they are steaming. This is to kill a bacteria that can live on these foods called listeria, and the bacteria can cause an infection and hurt the baby. In general, it's best to limit these foods as they're not very healthy for our bodies anyway. Do not eat food that is undercooked or raw when you're pregnant. Your immune system is lowered so your body does not reject the baby. And for this reason, you are more at risk for getting foodborne illness or food poisoning. Finally, take heart in eating many healthy foods and controlling your blood sugar. You are creating the next generation and giving your baby a healthier life.